This is the eye test. This is the eye test. The eye test. Ring gang. Radio. This is the eye test. Yes. 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 Final topic of the night. <laughs> you know, it's remix. Uh... <laughs> remix. <laughs> remix. Final topic. DJ Khaled. <laughs> Final topic. Yeah. We the best. I tell <laughs> <laughs> I test. Oh, oh, oh. We got Pat in the house, y'all. Yes, sir. Big we Pat. got King P in the house, y'all. What up? PJ, where you at, dog? You don't need to know. <laughs> and I guess I'm here, yo. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, Pat, set it up, um. That oh, yeah. uh, was the whole okay. Tiafimo Lopez uh, Romero connection. So basically, you know, after every fighter, you know, you know, decided to go. Hold on, who's opening up the cheeseburger? That's uh, P. He Sorry, that was me. Right I was there. Eating, <laughs> I'm, I'm eating some Starburst. Please, oh, eat Starburst. Gong gong. Fucking do, do hang with Benavidez, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but <laughs> but yo, um, so pretty much as everyone knows, Rolando Romero's getting shitted on by everyone. You know, it's a whole bunch of we are the world, Ebony Ivory comments coming toward Romero. <laughs> you know, so, uh, <laughs> quiet be like, your wild buns, you lost the fight. Why are you still around? <laughs> Don't move your head. <laughs> it's the World Cup songs where it's like to get everybody from around the world. Pretty much, you know, so it's just like, but one fighter refused to, you know, to dump on him, and that is our current IBF lightweight champion, Tiafimo Lopez, who pretty much said, in contrast to, in, in, for, to describe this whole situation, like, he thinks that's fucked up how people who have never boxed before have the nerve to criticize a boxer, you know, just to paraphrase. And then one person who, took offense to that was one Dan Raphael. I was going to say Fat Dan, but yeah, sure, given by his proper well, name. I have to not be respectful, because I've talked to Dan. Dan has always been a good guy to me, so I can't really go ahead and just be like... Well, I don't know him, so I'm just going to talk shit. He knocked over his Cheetos, he started clacking on the keyboard. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> PJ just said, you know what, fuck it. You know, but then Dan, when when someone asked Dan like why is like you know you know why is he telling Tio pretty much like to slow down to calm down, it is and Dan is like pretty much well I don't need well like I said I've been writing about boxing longer than he's been alive and I don't think I need to be able to take you know be able to go in there and take shots in order to prove that I know boxing. He don't oh, need to take shots, but he, I bet yo, Dan just a- fired a sniper around at him. He was just like yo I've been writing before you were even a sperm son. I'm like damn. <laughs> So yeah, so that pretty much set off a whole bunch of conversation on Twitter on the both post or whatever. So I was like, man, like I didn't think it would actually. I mean, in boxing, I mean, boxing has this. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that it doesn't have that mentality. Like there are certain things. Like there's, there's, there's a. I think in today there's a more of a disconnection between media and athlete. In in boxing is definitely one of those sports where it's a, it's a big disconnect because. Regular yeah, probably the boxing. biggest disconnect is in boxing media in the yeah. athletes. I would say striking in general, but boxing definitely does have a bigger spotlight because the backlash is louder. Yeah, pretty much. And mainstream boxing media has their biases, has a lot of, you know, you know, there are some, you know, in ESPN, <laughs> Steve Kim, you know, that have a lot of biases. I was going to say, I was just yeah. like, uh, a specific person who decided to shit on a guy who had a motorcycle accident, but you know. Yeah, yeah. shout out to Spoonface. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that talk? There's your reference right now. And the thing is, it's, it's, it's so, they be so condescending. And then when the boxers, you know, hit them with that, you know, that George Foreman, Larry Merchant routine, it's like they, you know, oh my God, I can't believe you said the, you've never boxed before word. Yeah, and then they lose their fucking collective minds, right? But then on the other hand, it be the journalists who be always damn shitting on the fans when they're just really fans with damn media access. True. Yeah. 
I mean, everyone knows, like, if you ever, if you ever follow Dan Raphael's Twitter and stuff like that, dude is a huge, he's a, he's a boxing there, like, dude's forever has, he's always showing off his programs, he's done these fights, he's boxing cars, he, you know, dude is, dude is a big, big, big box fan who just happens to make a living writing about it. Yeah, I mean, like, as, mu- as fun as I have, like, a shitting on him, he has done a lot, and you can tell he's dedicated to the sport and to the craft. Right. But the unfortunate thing with, with Dan, though, as PJ, you know, alluded to, you know, <laughs> you know it's the entitlement he has with it. Like, like he can't be wrong. Like, the, just the whole, you know, simmer down or, or, or calm down. Like, who the fuck are you to tell a motherfucker to calm down? Exactly. Hey, yo, P. What up? I was going to say, like, because of that first time I dunked on, uh, Dan, I was just like, yeah, I was just like, I want to be, you know, respectful, but nah, fuck that. You gonna go at him. Nah, nah, fuck that fat tub of lard. There he, blocked me on, he blocked me on Twitter. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I forgot all y'all be beefing with these dudes for real. I just. Well, be- no, I, I don't. I mean, like I said, I, I don't beef with them. No, no, because, because, because he's no, like. Pat has because, made diplomatic relations. He's, you know, because, oh, no, because I, I'm going to tell you why. Because <laughs> all these dudes, all, like, all these boxing dudes, fucking Rayfield, Montero, Kim, Dougie, always pop the most shit online when they would never do that in person. Like, they're a bunch of fucking geeks. Like, and so and then they want to get online and then act like they're like a diff, like an alternate reality version of themselves. Like if they were actually yeah. fighters. Like nah. It's funny because Doug Fisher, he actually been ran up on by boxers plenty of times. So, so does Steve Kim. Yeah. James Tony, I think with Vince Phillips, like. <laughs> <laughs> so. This so is the best part that I love about some of these journalists and stuff like that. Like, you're running your mouth, but these boxers know you're at those events. What makes you think they're not going to run up on you? Like, you're not going to notice when they sneak up behind you. You're just going to turn around and James Tony's in your face. Pretty much. <laughs> you're going to turn around and like... Roy Jones is there with a suit, but you know he's ready to, like, take you outside. But, but see, on the flip side, I see where, you know... I understand where, as a reporter, a journalist, you know, if you watch something for years and years and years and you study it and you it becomes you, you do have a right to an opinion. I'm not going to deny nobody that and say that, oh, man, because you never boxed before, you don't have a right to say this. Say, nah, nah. Oh my he, he has every right, but I feel like a lot of times they don't want to concede certain shit. Like, they think they know and can explain away everything and certain nuances that they lack because they never actually trained before. Right. And, and, and this but, is where the conversation hits that head point where they clash. Cause some people realize like because every athlete and like every athlete knows that you know the observer can learn a good amount and can have an insight with it, especially if they talk with other athletes. But there's certain tiny things that be like if you weren't there or you've never had to experience that, you won't understand the split decision, like split second decision that people make. They'd be like, Oh, why they do this? Why they could have done this? I'm like, you should know and that that level of pressure, it's one or the other. But some of them are like, oh, I can cover everything, and that's where they yeah, disconnect. I mean, nah, it is, it is, it is funny because I I seen a pic um, earlier today, like it's like a picture, like a drawing of like some fat dude on a, on eating Cheetos on his couch watching a boxing thing. He's like, well, he sh- he should have jabbed more. I, I was I was cracking up when I was seeing <laughs> that. Yeah, no, yeah. I was yeah, no, I was just gonna say, go to any sports bar, go to any bar or place that they should like streaming a fight. You're going to find that guy guaranteed somewhere, and even if you can't see him, you'll hear him. Well, PJ, just to, every before, single time. Before I before I go on, like I'm not as diplomatic as you think I am, because I had I had a little online beef with BJ Flores. So I mean, you know, Flores was kind of <laughs> he, he didn't like what I said about certain things, so he did, so he ran his mouth. So and LB saw it. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is the differences between that was. <laughs> Pat just echoed a statement from another fighter trainer who actually has credibility in the game. Right. And instead of going against the source, he he went on like on some lesser target, weak target type of shit, which I don't really appreciate because you know you can't disagree that with is someone on your called level. the art of Twitter fingers. Right. And no, that's just the art of that's the art of Twitter fingers. You the don't go for the source. You just go to the other one. 
<laughs> uh, yummy. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna argue against I'm the guy to who said it. it. So let's go. But but you're gonna argue against somebody who you know echoed the statement, echoed felt it. the same way. Like, nah, that's Don't some whole shit. Yeah, and and I and, and I actually held my tongue too because like I could have either DJ Flores to oblivion. How long ago was that? <laughs> uh, maybe what, when was that? Two months ago. Yeah, it was a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I'm just I just I, I retweeted um Pat's um um tweet and uh, I think it was Iceman Scully. Yeah, Iceman John Scully. That actually, yeah, that, yeah. yeah BJ Flores decided to go in his Michael Jordan. I took that personally. <laughs> See, because I, I, res- <laughs> I respect BJ Flores, but it's like, dude, was it never was. Facts, you know. It's like, so it's like you're you're like to me, you're almost like a fucking advanced fan that boxed. Yeah, <laughs> nah, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go that far. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go that far because he he called. <laughs> yeah, to say that shit. Yeah, I couldn't no. hear you. What'd you say? I said he caught feelings like a fan, so that's why I'm saying that shit. Right. He could have kept it as a discussion between two former fighters or two, you know, boxing personalities. He went at the fan on some. Okay, this is a weak target. Mm-hmm. And nah, I don't nah. That's that's some whole shit. So yeah. fuck that nigga, really. And like I said, I mean, I I come from Slack. I was like, yeah, I know. If I'm hearing something and the echoing something, yeah, you know, I because of my first thought, I was like, if I say something, somebody echoing, I'm just like, was that either, your opinion or did you get it from you someone? Know, I can't. Uh, yeah, I can't. Uh, I mean, I would have even to oblivion like about his career, but I was like, you know what? I'm not Twitter fingers. I don't do that. So I let him look. Yeah, he he lucky he had responded to you and not me. Yeah, because <laughs> if I had a damn tweeted something, oh, yeah, was, if he responded to LB, it would have been a rap. Yeah, <laughs> I'd have just, you know, I would have just, I'd have just hold on, let me dig out the VHS where I see him getting his ass kicked again. Hold on, <laughs> I'm talking about this moment when you had such great boxing say, insight. <laughs> oh man, I was no, gonna say, in reference to a specific forum, BJ Flores was talking to a moderator, he was not talking to the regular trench people. <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. Like I said, a lot of, like I said, a lot of boxing media. They just like, like I said, I mean, they say whatever, and then the, you know, when boxers come at them, they're like, okay, no, that doesn't mean I have to do anything. And then the first thing they say is like, well, so and so box personalities didn't fight, like, and they start rattling off trainers, and I'm just like, they're training fighters, and some, and some of them, like, they rattle off like they like wrong, like they say Customado, Customado fought, he just didn't fight. You know, like pro or anything. Like he fought amateur. So see, that's the thing. Like, if you boxed in the fucking ring and you sparred with headgear, that's still boxing to me. Whether you go amateur or pro, yeah. Because there's somebody on a certain level above you that you had to go against, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So them saying, I'm sure every fucking trainer has, at least eighty percent of trainers have gotten to that situation before, right. unless it's a type of a father-son thing where the father never boxed and he just learned about it and he said fuck it i'm gonna just study everything about it mm-hmm. but you know that's more rare than anything facts yeah i could say it personally i'm just like i'm still dealing with situations where i'm just like it's sparring day i have no clue who's showing out that door <laughs> I, a lot of these guys like know. that man, i just know is doing anything because of like a boxing physically yeah, my main gym, because like, cause of COVID, they do cohorting. I'm stuck with heavyweights. I'm not a heavyweight. It's just because I ate, and I, I'm now technically a heavyweight. I'm like, I'm a middleweight at best, but I'm like, guess what? I have to fight guys with like six foot five and more. I'm just like, well, that's fun. <laughs> uh, you know, but yeah, it's just a lot of, um, yeah, like, I, it, it, like the disconnect is just so crazy right now is between media and fighters. And it's just like, I mean, you can't be like, like, if you don't want to, if you don't want people to call you out on it, you know, you got to humble yourself a little bit. Like, you can't just, you know, if you're out here, like saying, you know, saying God knows what, where, and someone's calling you out, it's like, hey, you know, you shouldn't be talking about any fighter like that. You can't even box. Then, you know, if you put yourself in that situation, that's your fault. But truthfully, but truth to be told, though, there's, I mean, I don't think there's, I don't know if there's been any real famous boxing writer that's actually fought. As far as I know, yeah, Bert Sugar, I don't think ever fought. 
Yeah, I don't think Mark Sugar's ever But that's these guys are not even fucking training, bruh. Mm-hmm. So they'll never know what it feels like when it's the damn tenth round or the fifth round and your arms are tired from throwing so many fucking punches. Mm-hmm. The, Yo, the everybody needs to go through that at least once. You know, even if it's just like rounds of mid work, just like get that moment of you like dead tired and they're telling you keep going. I mean, and, the, and, and the guy holding the mid is right? the shit out of you. That's what I'm talking about. See, a lot of times, me personally, I look at it like a lot of non-boxing ass niggas, they have like a little chip on their shoulder or they take it to heart somehow because you don't respect their opinion as much as they think you should. Mm-hmm. And that's where that shit come from. Like like Fat Dan, he had, the way he talks, you would think he wants to train fighters. <laughs> Like, like, I mean, is he knowledgeable? Yes, but but he's just a big fucking fat boxing nerd. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Larry Merchant, he was cynical, but he came up in a different era, and he's right I mean, there. At least Larry yeah. Merchant was funny and charismatic. Yes, I mean, that too. See, and, and that's a he's talent. a charismatic you know. asshole. Yo, the only, the only, the only thing that I give, like, the only reason why I even like I'm like semi not as hard on Dan is because all like he actually does. He's the guy that breaks like he does always give us the news and like like he when he gives when when he's just breaking news I have no problem with because he does do that. It's just when he gets on his boxing opinions and like because I would I've read his mailbags for years. A lot of the shit that he said was just. Like when it came to when it came to asking him his opinion, I'm like, nah, oh, fuck out of here. Yeah, like his opinion, his his takes are the worst. And see, and that's the problem. These motherfuckers want to drop all these takes like they super knowledgeable because they have in ring experience when they don't. And then when you dismiss it, like this nigga never boxed before. It's oh my god, no, 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 simmer down, young man. I've been I've been watching boxing as long as you've been alive. Like, oh, really? Like, and then another argument that I've heard, um, in, in contrast to that, is like they'll say, um, "What's the thing with our Well, you, you'll never see a boxer being able to write an article about what they be able to do, what they do, and be able to meet the deadline. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, wow. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. Like you saying, Klitschko couldn't write the, the Klitschko brothers couldn't write an article on boxing. Shit, they got PhDs. They should be able to write anything they damn well please. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So you see how the epic reach they gotta use when 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 you put them against a damn wall. Yeah, exactly. It's just like you know, you uh, like I mean, like pretty much if you want to get a boxer's you know respect, you know, you gotta humble yourself. You can't just yeah, be- like like it's just it's just a matter of like. Like, I feel like these guys do have a chip on their shoulders and they take it a little extra just to show that they know what they're talking about. And then sometimes it comes off like, like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, just chill. that, yeah, just that extra, like, and just, you can tell in the way they're, they're aggressive, just the way that he responded, like the way that Dan responded, you know, to tail people. I guarantee you that somebody like Max Kellerman wouldn't have responded that way. Hey, Max hey. never boxed, but Max knows his boxing. Yeah, because Max knows where his line. He knows his lane, and the thing is, He's like, it's not that. Well, I guess not be here. Like, you know, some people's like, it's like a development of a like, kind of like conversational kind of thing. It's not that hard to say that. Hey, please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to say this. This is the easiest way to be somebody be like, okay, this bit right here, you might be mistaken. Be like, okay, thank you, because you're, you're telling them right off the bat. Be like, I only know so much. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But I think Max Kellerman's love for boxing is like infinitely higher than Dan Raphael's. Like, like a lot of these dudes, I don't really see. I don't think they enjoy and love boxing like that. Even no, I, was gonna, I, was, I was, I was, I was going to say a comment about Dan, but I'm just realized Pat has like you know that diplomatic relationship with him, so I'm going to like uh, hold my tongue. Nah, go off, go off. You can say it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say like, yo, Dan's passion. Uh, I was gonna say. Dan's passion for food is as much as like uh, Max Kellerman's passion for boxing. <laughs> <laughs> it, exactly, it, it's levels to it. So when you have that type of respect and admiration for the sport, you're gonna kind of check yourself a little bit when you're saying something a little stupid or you cross the line. Where I don't think Dan Raphael 
has that type of respect like even a guy like steve kim who is annoying and says off the wall shit i feel like even he has more respect for boxing than dan Raphael. he knows when to shut up that's basically it yeah well, he doesn't know when to shut up sometimes yeah, he steve don't kim. No, he don't no know because he knows he he knows he's probably gonna be hiding in like a basement yeah. somewhere. He's not and, gonna and be there in the fight card. He's even he's even worse to me because then not only is does he talk a lot of shit, then he gets on like his the anytime he tries to report like some inside news, he's always wrong. He's like he's basically boxing's version of um, DJ Dave Academic. Melt. Uh, he's no, he's the boxing version of Dave Meltzer. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, basically he he'll he'll wait till Mike Tobinger actually says something, or Pugmire, and then he'll or even eat it, you know, and he'll repeat it like like maybe five minutes after they do. See, that's the problem. Why is one source? Why is one source or entity coming with the news, and then you got ten niggas making a living off of repeating it? Then you know they want to put their little spin on it. Yeah. Like we care about their fucking opinion if they're not bringing news. Yeah, that's yeah. That, and, 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 Never they're, underestimate they're, the power they're, they're of the, a grifter. They're the bandwagon champs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, boxing. Yeah, movie. they're the guys who don't let you hop in the bandwagon. They're like, hey, yo, big man, big man, big man. Your flag isn't big enough. <laughs> yeah, be yeah, yeah. Like boxing media, like, like how they move and operate. Sometimes is pretty. Yeah, the big mainstream ones is pretty. It's pretty funny how they do. You know, and it's like you I know. feel like I feel Here. like. Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I feel like the reason why, like they're not as passionate, like some of these guys aren't as passionate about like reporting boxing is because probably because I don't think boxing is their is their main like like if they were to be like reporting like another sport like football or basketball, they'd rather be doing that. But there's more. Uh. There's more cred- like credentials. It's harder to get into that field, so they stop the boxing. Mm-hmm. Nah, like they settle. You know they what? settle. Nah, fuck that. That's some culture vulture shit. That's some. That's like these. But these damn... dudes are culture vulture. <laughs> exactly. That's why I don't respect it because it's on some. Well, let me use boxing as a come up. Let me use hip hop as a come up. Uh, let me use black culture as a come up. Yeah, because I'm like. As much as I like to make fun of him, you know what? Ellie Sackback, you can tell he like legit likes the sports he talks about. So you will see him always there no matter what. Even when you see like those athletes or coaches get annoyed with him, they'll be like, you know, he's just here. He's just a he's just a dick rider who likes to slobber people's nuts. Like I I, I don't think he's just usually (laughs) super enthusiastic anyway. You can you can be no you can you can be super, you you can be super you know enthusiastic without having to suck the Garcia's nuts. Just saying. You didn't push this man to make his it's own. Because every other gym kicked him out. Yeah. Because all the other gyms, I think, more or less kicked him out. Well, I'm gonna give Ellie sit back all these gyms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say, fuck it. Let me make my own damn YouTube channel, my own shit. And that's the thing is, yeah, like, I'm gonna no... go straight to Robert Garcia's channel. Yeah, exactly. See, see, there's no vetting of boxing personalities, and you know, with YouTube and everybody doing their own thing, it's like whoever fucking just steps their weight up first, you know, whoever gets yeah. the most clout first, you know, you start listening to what they got to say. Not necessarily meaning they know what the fuck they're talking about. Mm. But you gotta start somewhere because they usually <laughs> don't know what they're talking about so why even listen to them fake it till you make it i mean it me because other people don't know that i don't want to listen to a motherfucker talk about boxing and he ain't never boxed before <laughs> especially if you ain't got no personality or, or no you're not humble <laughs> then I, I made you just post on a message board <laughs> and you post yeah, i'm gonna be like if you're gonna talk shit have no, some like I'm, comedic delivery so then you'd be funny as hell i'm not listen i'm I, it doesn't bother me if you've never actually you know been in you know in the trenches it's just the arrogance and the gall of some of these people that never have been in the exactly. trenches <laughs> yeah we, we're not gonna get on max keller no that's the, we're not gonna get so, on. yeah that's what i was gonna say i'm just gonna hop on uh 
yeah i'm gonna step in real quick for this this conversation has been actually going on for like probably a longer time versus that one moment that popped up it always pops up again and again and again and the biggest issue is the people who have not been in the trenches for some not all of them just some of them some of them just feel like oh you know I've like scoured enough of Google or like, you know, like done all this. So therefore <laughs> I should be in this higher pedestal or around the same level of the fighters. Whereas it's not that hard if you're talking to somebody who's been in an aspect of the, the sport that you're in an aspect that you know, you don't know. There's nothing wrong with saying like, hey, I only know this much. Would you be willing to like give your insight? There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know why people want to feel like I want to speak over them. Why not work with them? You might get some gems for some of those guys who made that like you because the thing the biggest thing that people don't realize like especially in like the fight game is the journeymen have tons of stories and information that you don't know just talk sit and talk with them they'll tell you yeah, all but see, that's lot. not sexy and flashy enough for these big time media guys yeah exactly. big time my ass like the, the, like they like you know it's the guns and butter like analogy <laughs> Like they, like they got the, you know, they got, they got, they got to have something that they can tell to someone like that. A journeyman, unfortunately, journeyman stories, while they, you know, while interesting, are not going to capture the casuals or lay readers' attention. So, personally, I think that's based on like delivery. Because <laughs> a lot of people like when they show somebody who like they may come off boring because people don't know it's going to come boring but if you like decide like look into little things that are exciting about them especially like when certain some of those like old fighters that we've all ran into when you when you talk about something that you it sparks them up how more lively do they become but pj we can't we can't even get like actual media like actual like documentaries on fighters if they're not ali or jack johnson or something like that you know what I'm yeah saying? i know <laughs> they, they're gonna go sooner to a dead dude than versus an actual guy alone. <laughs> Or if they're not Mike Tyson, you know, like, you know, you got... And Mike Tyson's getting sick of it, too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, Mike is, yeah, you know, it sounds like, you know, there are people that are out here, you know, I know my boy Ryan, you know, shout out to him. He's like, you know, he, he, he I mean, first of all, he, hates, he doesn't like Ali for nothing. And he hates all the Ali documentaries and stuff like that, you know, and he's like, he'd love to see, like, boxing, you know, like other, like, documentaries on other boxes, like stuff that, you know, that's not talked about as much, you know. So it's just of like course. yeah, there was like a going back to the same ten boxers. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, but there was well, like that's because okay. these dudes. Netflix. That's be, that's because these dudes are hype beats. Like, yeah, come on, like get, that, that's the biggest problem. These guys claim to be like any like a lot of these people, even on Twitter, they like I see it all the time. They claim to be boxing heads, but they really only want to talk about you know the boxers that are hot. Like let them like even bring up like bring up Monster and they'll be like oh well I, he's too small like they don't they don't watch any anything below 126. So how am I supposed to take you <laughs> no, seriously? They're, they're gonna do what this what every street nigga says. I'll go yo I'm just gonna lift him and slam him to the ground. <laughs> exactly like it's a stupid shit. How can you expect me to take your opinion seriously when you just they disrespect me. fighters that they don't know anything about? Awesome like, like if you know a good chunk of your boxing. The monster is always going to be in your conversation, like ammo, right away. Yeah. Hey, like, and even before that, yeah, I was, just, I was just going to say chocolate. I was going to say chocolatito. Oh my it's god, chocolatito should be there too. But, but 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 see, the problem was chocolatito got his flowers too late, and by the time yeah. like he got his flowers, everybody was just bombarding him with flowers that it just became the cool thing to fucking just. Bring remember up what? Chocolatito, and I just got tired of here. I don't want to hear about Chocolatito. Remember what we used to call Chocolatito back then? The diplomatic pound for pound? Yes. <laughs> the United Nations of pound for pound. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing, man. And a lot of these famous lists, man, they all, it's like a damn secret society club, man, when they do the pound for pound. Like, just, just some like, um, pound for pound list don't even deserve to be on there, but. You see him enough time on there now, you really think he deserving. <laughs> Yo, uh, PJ. <laughs> Choco Tito's, uh, now I'm laughing because like, Choco Tito's pound, like, diplomatic pound for pound is the equivalent of LB, LB when it comes to Cuban fighters, except for Casa Mayor. He's like the one, oh the one fucking, the one, 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 like one, the one, like that's what, like that, that's, a, that's essentially what the they one, the 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 one
there's an unbalanced hype with Cuban boxers that I call out first more than anything because for some reason people always whoa the Cuban school of boxing and then when you look at the fighter he steps up loses mm. and it happens too often where it's to the point like why is this school so notorious for some shit that niggas did in the amateur when we're talking about pro boxing bro it's it's, it's a tag at this point like you take that shit so seriously it's a tagline like because I don't it, even like because it could <laughs> go okay hold on so this is the problem we have it now and then this is this is exactly what it comes back down to niggas who actually love and care about the sport and have boxing experience will sound serious when they're debating actual real shit that they've been seeing happen for years where if i was if i was dan raphael too rough for others if if i was dan raphael i would just dismiss what you're saying and say you don't know what the fuck you're talking about yeah. <laughs> I mean I'm just saying ain't, 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 ain't that what we complaining about <laughs> yeah pretty yeah. much yeah. you know it's... yeah cause the thing is like you can tell when somebody's having a conversation about it, like you could tell people who have been in the sport to a certain extent even if they've just like they've been in the gym or they've like been in the ring just to spar even like basic basic sparring their tone is going to sound entirely different based about like oh do you know about this that's why this part things like people are gonna be like no it's a whole other game when you hop in the ring yeah it's basically you say people, the cardio changes like people it, the it, mental it, changes i mean most people talk about it with more enthusiasm i, I noticed that too it's like exactly know, like the more because almost everybody who's been in the ring has experienced these stories the person who hit you with the first body shot, the person who just like beat you with just a jab, the person who you threw a combination yep. and slipped through all three punches like it was not. She, I remember, everybody's experienced that. You're I, like, I, re- I am I going rem- to die. Yep, I remember the first time I got hit with a really nice body shot. Nigga, I damn near cried. Mm. Okay, Thurman. Um, okay. Everybody has a body shot story. Yeah. yeah. But that's the thing is like Pat Wright, the the enthusiasm is like light year difference, bro. Like, so when I get a choice, yeah. when I get a choice to listen to somebody who's enthusiastic, loves boxing, is passionate about it, compared to somebody who's like, yeah, um, okay, yeah, this fight's pretty good, but you you heard they got the new the the fresh salmon out on the buffet table. So, <laughs> yeah, ba- basically business decisions. <laughs> New salmon on the <laughs> So I mean, of course I'm gonna be like, well, this nigga. But that's why you know, for as bad as Timothy Bradley's commentating could get sometimes, <laughs> when he gets riled up and he just starts spitting real shit, I appreciate it. Especially when he decides to start shitting on somebody, but that is by far the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> he gets so mad too. <laughs> It's coming, it's coming from the heart, though. Especially when it, he's calling about something that he's done as his own mistake, too. He gets even more mad. Mm. Yeah. And then it's like, in, in, in the reporting in boxing, it's like, no one hold, no one asked a question that we want to hear asked. You know, no one's holding guys accountable. You're not going to get these type of Larry Merchant questions or... You know where a dude will remember how bad you looked in your last fight and bring it up to you. Yeah, this well, fight. well, and show it on screen. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, unfortunately, kind of Larry Merchant. I don't want to say he ruined Floyd ruined that for everybody because that's what happens when you get too overzealous or like when you get too real. So you won't see Larry Merchants again because of shit like that. Nah, you won't see like shit like that because not because of Floyd. It's because of a whole generation of fighters. You can't tell them anything. You gotta baby these niggas. Yeah, like like I literally grew up in the era where fucking James Tony was cursing out Jim Gray every other week. It's Bye. like there's no tough love. It's like no objective. <laughs> Look, think Those about are the greatest this. interviews. Do you think Vince <laughs> Phillips would be running up on Doug Fisher if he didn't, you know, say some, you know, write some shit that got to his heart or, or think he didn't deserve to win a fight or or, or whatever reason? You're not I still get love that because this one now... interview with uh, Jim Gray and James Tony where like Tony's group had to pull him away. Oh yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is like you're not gonna get that now because everybody's like, okay, uh, I need this exclusive. I need this interview. Yeah, because the thing is like, well, 
it's also because of like how like certain websites are is like how does traffic work because it keeps flipping every single time what gets me the most clicks what gets me the most views what does this so people are exactly. so focused on all that shit. it makes things where people who would probably put more effort to being authentic they're like nah i need the numbers which it is jeopardizing really the integrity of the sport bro mm. yeah so we get a lot of yes men conversations and and no one asks the tough questions and no one's like so did you really feel like you heard him oh you know what I'm like, here's the funny part like most fighters even the ones currently today have no problem answering these questions answering these questions it's just nobody wants to ask them and i'm like why yeah. you can tell they don't mind answering because they'll be like because you can tell like when they're being asked those boring questions like yeah he's a good guy yeah, yeah but even even like, no but like even the worst like even at the worst like you might as well just ask or you're gonna be like at the, i don't feel like any of these dudes will like take it that far at worst you'll get like an adrian broner moment which would be more funny than crazy yeah mm-hmm. yeah but somebody gotta step up and and i don't even look at the floyd um merchant shit is bad because if he felt merchant was really bad he would have never been made up with dude about it before the yeah, photo he fight, slugged him. <laughs> he would have never. He would have probably just been like, "Fuck this nigga, get him." You know, I don't want him uh, commenting on the Kodo fight here. This, that, that. This is why I've always said, like, talking to somebody literally at the end of whatever the event is, whether they want a loss, is like the worst time to ever interview them. Yeah, the emotions are so high. Yep. And you can't just turn it off. Like you can't just turn it off. Like like right. oh, oh, you just had that adrenaline, and now we got to go back to like. Especially no, still... if the two fighters had beef. If the two fighters had beef, you are not turning off whatever that winner is thinking. They are gonna run their mouth like crazy. If there's a microphone, so, they're gonna say anything. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. See, that's is cool. he okay? It, it takes somebody to box to kind of understand that little nuance man and, and that's what's missing you got people who are so arrogant in their profession that they feel no need to try to learn more about it mm. and, and you know what makes it funny to. is the ones who english is not their first language they're probably the best ones to give an interview right after winning because they don't understand what the questions are that's why i always find uh Usyk the funniest conversations like how are you feeling it's like i am feel i am very feel <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lomachenko, Golovkin. That, that, that is true. It's like Max, Max, Max. It's not game. It's fights. I, I just fights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, for the and longest time, why, I had no why idea. The Eastern yeah. Europeans get why? so popular now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for the because longest time, I had no idea why. Uh, in that Triple G was so happy saying Max's name. Then I found out his older his older brother's name is Max. I'm like, ah, there we go. So but Max how amazing of a name is that? Max Golovkin. <laughs> a maximum version of Golovkin. <laughs> Max Golovkin. <laughs> so I mean that I mean at the end of the day, like I just feel like everybody just need to kind of respect everybody's position a little more. But boxing gotta get away from all that one up man shit. Yeah. Boxing. Yeah, I would also say is like it's, Hold on, nigga. Like, let yeah. me finish, bro. Like, hold on. No, it's I'm I'm hearing lag. That's why. Oh, no, I'm saying it's like that's why I just boxing. finished last time. <laughs> this nigga, hold on. Did you, you you got the floor, nigga? Oh, uh, I say it was like uh, when I'm hearing you guys right now. There's a connection issue. I have to disconnect again real quick because I'll hear you guys like a minute or two later. So give me a sec. I'm just gonna come right back. <laughs> oh, cause I'm like that, that's why you kept talking over Pat all night. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, basically I'm just saying like boxing got to get away from the whole one man, one up man shit. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it's it's always going to happen, man. Like you know, it's it, it's it's unfortunate it's happening more now because, like I said, you know, internet is internet and boxing is it's. I mean, it's still, uh, it's still like only 20 years old at the, at the most. It's not anything that's been, you know. This is true, been, yeah. This is true. And it gets. Then we always gonna have these conversations, bro. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just weird because when, like, in comparison to other sports, when you have all these other reporters and stuff, you know, interviewing athletes, like, it's just different. The nuance is different. I, I don't know. I, I was like, why can't boxing be that smooth, right? Man, we need, always... we need a new media, bro. We we need a new wave of people. 
it just you need some inject some life, man. I, I feel you. Yeah, because it's pretty much it's just like everyone. It, basically, boxing it, it's one up. Everyone everyone wants to be better than the other. It, everyone has agendas, biases, and it. I mean, every you think that people just liking boxing would just be common ground, but it has to be something more with some people. Yeah. There's agendas and all that shit. Like media, media shits on the fan because they got access to the fighters the fans want to see and. And, and talk to never mind and, and i and i haven't even mentioned the the other little thing that like you don't deal with in other sports with the fucking the racial undertones and all that shit like between boxing reporters and shit like that like i be seeing the slick shit they and sometimes it'd be racially motivated yeah like you like and that's that's the other reason why i don't respect a guy like steve kim because he got mad he got he decided to get drunk and then yell at Crawford's boy and like and call him racist because he didn't like the love kid. Like, what kind of dick riding? Like, what kind of shit is that? Like, you're out of your fucking mind. And and for like a, a media person to even just say some shit like that, like, first of all, people could like who they like, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can, you know, but it's just like he can't be. He looks at. So, uh, and the funny thing is, with all this, I have not. I, I'm surprised I have not seen one boxer go after a media person like this, like really go after them like physically. You know, it's just like, I mean, at, at best thing, you know, that some of them just get banned from certain places. Like I know during, you know, Dan was getting the, you know, was getting like the secondhand treatment on top rank cards. Yeah, probably because it's, it's not worth the dealing, like these guys are harmless, like at the end. Like, so it's like, it's like you get mad and then you realize that they're just geeks and fuck it, they're harmless. So it's not even worth your time. If I'm a boxer, I wouldn't fucking want to de- deal with them either. Like, just, yeah, because look, you don't you don't respect like what they got to say. Like, the fuck you gonna beat them up for? Yeah. <laughs> like running after some mute bitch or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, be yeah, a boxing media. Boxing media is a goddamn trip, man. And like the, about their opinions and everything like that. Well, uh, yeah, but it, overall, just to wrap things up, yeah, everything just need er, er, everyone just needs to get better about this. Boxers need boxing media. Media needs boxers. Without them, you know, without media, boxers don't get the type of you know type of press that they get because most boxers can't really sell themselves. And media people without boxers, they would have no jobs. So yeah, they, but that that doesn't mean boxer. That doesn't mean that the media guys have to be all up in the videos, all up in the like. Like nobody wants to see y'all. Like, like, y'all not chill, like, y'all don't want to go into the gym, then like play your fucking position. <laughs> like y'all, y'all don't want to fucking get sweaty. Y'all don't want to throw no jabs. <laughs> y'all don't want to run no on no treadmill. Y'all don't want to spar. Y'all don't want to hit no heavy bag. Chill. Like, <laughs> like although there you, are there are some that do, and that's a, there's one I forgot who who's the guy that oh, I forgot who one of them was actually in the gym fucking sparring with Lubin a couple of years ago I don't know if it was Coppinger or somebody was I'm like when I saw that I'm like damn like I actually give him props for that motherfucker stepped in the gym put in some work on a cover exactly it, it takes guts for that it just you still gotta know your place but I, I respect someone doing that like cause I, I'll just say it like this if, if if people just looking for someone that have boxing opinions that actually, you know, got boxing experience, then yeah, come on over to uh, Ring Gang Records. I mean, Ring Gang Radio, <laughs> where you, the reporters writing articles ain't all in your videos. Niggas ain't ad libbing in your interviews. Niggas <laughs> ain't yeah. shitting on you for losing one round. Yep. Honestly, I don't. I don't even be like. I, it's gone. It's gone to the point where, like, I'm so over the boxing media that I don't even watch none of these motherfuckers' videos. I don't even watch fighting the hype. I don't even watch the fight hype videos anymore. Like, yeah, like that. Like the only the only guy whose videos I'll watch because I, I do respect him. I, I he he does. He's not. He's he's cool. Is uh, Marcos Viegas. Like his video. I fuck with Marcos Viegas. Everybody else is just like. Ugh. Yeah, when it comes like at the end of the day, like yo, if you boxing media, just present me news. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about your non-boxing ass opinion, nigga. Yeah, if you if you got news, break it. If you got a rumor, break it. Everything else, yeah. you know, just keep it neutral. And if you've been in the game and I know you got some type of insight I could respect, 
You know, I'll even read your mailbag. <laughs> Shout out to Brett, man. Shout yeah. out to Brett. That's about it. Like, you know, ain't nobody else. That He's really the only one to, I know. Yeah, ain't nobody else really, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'll fuck with Fisher mailbag, Brett mailbag, and whoever brings some news to the table. Yeah, I'm, well, Brett doesn't count because he really be in the gym like that. Motherfucker's a trainer. Yeah. Like, so. But remember, he was doing the mailbag and, and all that shit back on Boxing Talk, like, way before he even yeah. got th- that type of prominence. Yep. No, no, you're right. But, like, when I would, like, when I would, because I've been reading his mailbag for the longest. And, like, the insight that that he would give, sometimes I'd be like, does he, like, does he do any type of boxing? Has he, like, he's probably been in a gym. Like, you can tell yeah. the way he talks boxing that he's been in the gym. Like, that's the thing. You can tell who's been in the gym and who hasn't been in the gym just off the energy they give and what they're saying. Exactly. Yeah. But then, you know, you start reading them long enough and they get a little jaded or commercialized. And <laughs> you say, nah, I've seen it happen to him and Doug, but I still got respect for him. I still read they shit each week, look forward to it, but... Yeah, no, Doug, Dougie's got too jaded for for me, and even and even Brett got to that point too. But like Dougie's yeah. so far, Dougie's so far gone. That it's like it's hard for me to even listen, yeah. to, read his well, shit. When you, when you write boxing for like damn near thirty years, <laughs> <laughs> and you see all these errors, and you know, especially comparing them to this one, I, no, I can no understand traits. it. You know, I ain't gotta like it. Word. And now you know with J Rock being in prominence and you know in big fights. You know, bread ain't gonna drop all the type of gems. He gonna keep some of them to himself. So, which I respect. Yep. Yeah. You know, but other than that, like, there ain't really nobody I'm really checking for like that. As far as, you know, seeing what they got to say. Except or, for ring game. Opinions. That's all we we care about. Ring game. Yeah, it's ring game. You know, all that other shit. If if I need to hear a fucking coach talk about a fight, call my nigga PJ. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. if, we, if we, I mean, obviously we do, there are some people we do, like, you know, shout out, you know, shout out to my boy, Big Faces, you know, Big Faces, you know, talk their town, all that type of stuff, like, you know, there are, there are people, there are actually people that actually do stuff for, you know, for boxing or whatever. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. But as far yeah, as they like, just don't you know, have the attention they need. Yeah. <laughs> but, but as far as all these people who just, they have no personality, no skills, no talent, and they're only good for bringing news then yeah that's all I want you to do yeah that's real and it's that, not even like that hard to do yeah <laughs> so, so it's so easy they want to add extras to it and then that's when the problem starts right you tell right. them like look I just need all you. I had to do was just like repost I'm done <laughs> <laughs> like you, you no to I want more too. they want more the, like oh, I can just repost this. I or I, I deserve to be near a boxing ring. <laughs> I deserve to have ringside seats and, and tweet my opinion. I deserve fuckers that don't care about my opinion. <laughs> I deserve to see pictures of boxing gloves. <laughs> I deserve to eat, I deserve to eat all the food at the buffet and the in the boxing media at the food court. I deserve a second plate of that salmon that's in the back on the buffet table. <laughs> I deserve the first, second, and third goes at the Pernil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, but, yeah. Honestly, that's what it come down to, man. Like, <laughs> like, let's all do better. Yeah, yeah, we got to do better. And, and honestly, I mean, it's not the first time we're going to have this conversation. And it's probably not going to be the last either. You know, that's the unfortunate. As long as there's boxing, I would say unboxing niggas, there's always gonna be beef. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'd say like because of the whole pandemic, everybody has extra time, so we're gonna see more of these conflicts happen. Yeah, okay. facts. And with, with time, with idle time comes anger and frustration. <laughs> so you know that's. The I, get beat, I get I get to beat the shit out of things, so I'm okay right now. I'm I'm straight. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, so yeah, just to wrap it up, uh, we, you know, we've you know, come to the end of our show for tonight. Uh, it was a good show, it was good to have you know, four of us up here as usual, you know, even with the suspect in the adventures, even though with the suspect in of one person, 
Dude, I am so livid right now. <laughs> but PJ, man, do you have any final thoughts, bro? Uh, the main final thoughts for this whole debate, like I said, it's going to always keep coming back. It basically boils down to, and it's really weird because like people should just know it because it basically boils down to life communication. You know what you know, but there's nothing wrong with telling people I don't know could you let me know or just simply this is not my forte but a lot of people feel like i need to step in and make my hot take for no good reason i don't know why there's nothing wrong with saying like hey this is what i know could you help me fill the gaps don't make enemies for no good reason even if you feel you're quote unquote higher up just ask there's nothing wrong with getting information why not make like uh in a an environment where everyone can learn and grow together that's it that's great. You know, I, I like it. That was nice and positive. Yeah, because because then because that would that would make people have to admit that they don't know as much as they think they do. And you know, people's pride is too big for that. Yeah, boxing is about the most prideful sport ever. It's so prideful, even the fucking media guys got pride. <laughs> <laughs> These media guys have never eaten a liver shot before, so I I don't know what to say. <laughs> What do you mean I can't speak about how it feels to damn get a cut over the eye? <laughs> oh man. I had a paper cut one time. That was close. <laughs> <laughs> They'll literally argue the death on Twitter. That that's what makes it worse because the the ones who know the let le- the less the least amount of boxing be the ones who argue that shit the hardest. Word. You oh. just gotta nod, smile, and move on. Yeah, try not to put hands on them when you see them in the at the fight. <laughs> Word, Ao um, LB man, do you have any final thoughts? Ah uh, man, just another blessing to be here. You know, repping that gang. You know, Ring Gang Radio. Make sure y'all keep subscribing um, and following us on all the platforms: Twitter, YouTube, um, IG. You know, Podomatic. Shout outs to everybody. You know, France. Sweden, the UK, España, um, <laughs> Thailand, you know, everybody, you know, we, we see y'all out there, Ring Gang, uh, and just be on the lookout for that, um, that Ring Gang cartoon episode two is on its way, it's almost done, yes. it's gonna be like a little eye test spinoff, just like how, you know, me and PJ had to come on some spinoff shit today, yes. So, um, and then taking the story out, available with my nigga Rome. Shout out to the rest of the gang, RTDZ, Clan Hockey, um, and, and, and Prolific. Y'all know how I do, man. RingGangRadio.com. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And P, you have any final thoughts? Yeah, well, actually, a random thought just, picked, just popped up into my head. And I was thinking, I'm like, when LB was shouting out all these, all these countries that be listening to us, I'd be thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder if they'd be picking up some extra English by listening to our podcast. Man, they'd be li- <laughs> their, their, their vocabulary would be too raw. <laughs> oh, they're gonna get the most fucked up English from us. Yes, nah, because I because like, there are other countries that like listen to shit just to brush up on their English. Like Mexicans be like downloading videos of, like Mickey Mouse and Tom and Jerry to brush up on their English. Maybe they they brushing up on Ring Gang Radio English. Motherfuckers getting the rawest. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, get, wow. yeah, we, you know yeah. what? The most globally learned word I think thus far from all our episodes is fuckery. Basically. Yeah, I but, mean, I mean, I see. I mean, obviously, Podomatic and also Anchor too. Anchor also gives a breakdown, like, and I we definitely get a lot of countries tuning in to uh, and listening. So I mean, but it's just more or less like, you know, when will they make it known publicly? Yeah. But anyways, you know, we love all our followers from all around the world. You know, keep supporting us. We got you. We got some fire shit on the way. Got another another cartoon coming soon. You know, the next edition. It's the next episode. You already know. Follow us on everything. And of course, ringgangradio.com. Com, com, com. Yes, sir. You know, and then like I said, just to touch upon the final thought because I, I just logged into our uh, anchor. And I was like, man, we got some interesting companies. I mean, we have Iran, Bahamas, 
the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. <laughs> Damn. Okay. All right. We, yeah. we learn box. We we learn box. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we definitely, <laughs> yeah, we yeah, we definitely have you know we definitely have a good following. I, and, and I love it. I love seeing this. You know. Um, but um, yeah, you know, obviously shout out everyone in the gang or whatever. You know, we got just a bunch of people just using the Wu Tang sound. Woo woo woo. <laughs> the cartoon coming, of course. Um, the my predictions, my own predictions for um, for next weekend's fights. They are currently they are done. Well, two of them are done, and you know I will you know go make those live later on this week. One will currently uh, will currently be recorded probably sometime on Wednesday. So you know watch out for those. And uh, yeah, and of course article. You know still just I'm still debating on which fights to actually do it's either a 175 or a 140 fight you know, you know, we'll, you know i'll make that decision very shortly and um yeah. 168 <laughs> you know it's a, it's a there was some cocaine on it so, <laughs> <laughs> the you know, battle for the opium fields <laughs> But, uh, yeah, but yeah, you know, shout out to everybody. You know, just keep support, keep supporting, bringing because you know we do this for y'all. You know, what I'm saying we we're, you know, we're box in our core. We're just we're boxing fans that we love the sport and we like to just and we like to show how much we love it. You know, just by all the stuff that we do. You know that we do for it. So you know, hopefully you continue to appreciate it. You know, you tell your people and your know, people can tell your people. Then we can all be people. You know what I mean? So. So yeah, we can, argue, we, we can argue about marinating every day. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and and the build. Can we not? <laughs> Please, let's not. <laughs> oh man. You know, so for myself, you know, Pascal for the New representer. You know, for LB Shadow with the God, the Goat Artist for King P, Bodega P for PJ the Fight Architect. You know, it's been another wonderful episode of Real Talk. Where as always, if shit's real, we talk about it. So, until next time, peace.